Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about the Reaper Digital Audio Workstation and I'm also going to give you seven reasons why I record with it. That's coming up on Home Music Studio One. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. This is Dave Maxey, the host of the Home Music Studio One podcast. It's what you're listening to right now, and this is officially episode number 27. And I want to remind you right off the bat that this is the place where you can learn how to produce professional audio, even on a limited budget. If you are listening to us in iTunes, uh, you can also now find us in the YouTube channel, and you can see the video version of this same episode as well. You can find us there there by heading on over to youtube.com forward slash H Music Studio One. That's H Music Studio One. Uh, well, again, as I said, my name is David Maxey, and um, it's very good to be back with you again with another episode. Seems like it's been just a little while. We are now headlong into the very first month of 2014, which is pretty cool. Hopefully your new year is going well. And uh, I really wanted to uh, to sit down and do just a, a short episode, or at least a uh, not an all-inclusive list of the Reaper DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation. I'm going to give you seven of the reasons that I am currently using Reaper. And I want to kind of preface this before we get there by saying just a couple things. Uh, number one, this episode is not about saying uh, if you're not using Reaper, then you've just got the wrong uh, recording software. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that uh, Reaper is number one and uh, everything else just pales in comparison. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I am doing is going to give you a, an affordable option and the reasons that I consider Reaper to be the number one affordable option for a full-featured, non-limited, very affordable digital Digital audio workstation. I'm going to give you seven of those. They are not all the reasons by any means. Uh, they're just some things that have more recently stood out to me as I'm working on a brand new project over the new year. And then the second thing I want to point out is the number one most popular post that I did a while back on HomeMusicStudio1.com was a post dealing with the best recording software. The best software for you is really depending on a lot of things. It's relative, right? It's de depending on your gear. It's depending on several things. And so there are three questions uh, that I propose that will make you uh, be, have the ability to decide, am I using the right recording software, the right DAW or not? And those three questions are this, can you afford it? Number one. Number two, uh, is it something that is the software will do what you're trying to accomplish with the project goals that you have? And then number three, is the software, the DAW that you're recording with, is it something that you are able to learn how to use? You can get over the learning curve of how to use it. You know, a $2,000 Pro Tools uh, box with, you know, the whole kit and caboodle means nothing if you don't know how to use it. And so think of those things when I talk about Reaper and the things that I'm going to share with you, because if you already have an answer to those questions and you're working with a, a digital audio workstation, I'm not necessarily saying that you've got the wrong one. However, I'm, I'm really addressing today those of you that are you're kind of on the fence, you're just not sure, or maybe you're getting into this recording thing and you really would like a more affordable option, a very flexible option, both budget and features, and then you really might want to consider some of the things that I have to share with you. So uh, let's get into this, talking about the Reaper DAW and seven reasons why I record with it. Reason number one, uh, I want to take you over to Reaper.fm. That's R-E-A-P-E-R.fm. Uh, reason number one is this. There is only one full version of Reaper that is downloadable. Uh, you may wonder about a particular recording software and think, boy, I wish I could just uh, find someone that has that and I could try it out before I spend hundreds of dollars. Here's what I love about Reaper. The number one thing, you can download the full version of Reaper, the only version of Reaper that is available absolutely free. You can download it at reaper.fm. Uh, it's available for both Mac and PC. Uh, it is available, we'll talk about this in a little bit, it's available in both 32 and 64-bit versions versions of it, uh, as well as uh, as for the Mac as well. So uh, you can download it. It will not cost you a thing. And it is giving you the ability to evaluate. The recommendation is for up to 60 days. And it is not a limited version of the program. Okay, when you download it, 
and install it, uh, you're going to be able to load the exact drivers you're using for whatever uh, audio interface you're using, and you're getting the full version of Reaper. It's not a timed delay where you uh, where it just quits working after a certain amount of time. It doesn't drop audio out every 30 seconds. You have the full version of Reaper at your disposal to try. You can run a whole entire project on it. You're going to get every bit of quality as those that paid and purchased the program. It's the same program. Okay, there's only one version of Reaper. And that is awesome, especially if you're on a limited budget and you want to make sure that you are maximizing where your money goes. You don't have to spend money on something only to find out, wow, I really can't get over the learning curve or wow, this just doesn't do what I need it to do. Uh, you know, and, and now you've spent money and you're, you're just hosed, okay, uh, for those of you that are up north, all right. Uh, but the truth is you can download a fully version, the only version of Reaper, the fully functional version that there is. You can download it, try it for as long as you need before you make the decision to buy it, which I'm convinced won't take very long if you have any interest at all in Reaper. The number two reason that I love Reaper is the affordability of when you get to the point of deciding to buy it, okay? Um, if you head over to Reaper.com, you can look at the bottom left-hand side of uh, the main homepage there. They give you a little information. There's lots of stuff about Reaper that you can read. I won't go into all of that. But uh, they have what they continue, they consider a discounted license uh, for small businesses and personal use. Uh, and that means if you are not a commercial studio where you are making a complete living at recording projects and, and you're doing that commercially, uh, for you it would cost $225, which is hugely affordable. But for the personal individual, or maybe you've got a small studio in your home, you're really recording personal demos and that kind of stuff, uh, in, in, in or a small business, you're doing some smaller version stuff, you're helping some other people uh, with some smaller demos, for $60 you can buy Reaper. $60 for a DAW that is full featured, that is not limited, that gives you all sorts of options that's expandable. And I'll talk about some other things that I really love about Reaper in just a minute as well. But the number two thing I love is it is amazingly affordable. And affordable matters when you're on a limited budget, right? Uh, so those are the first two things. The third thing that I love about Reaper is the default array of plugins that come with Reaper. Now, I've mentioned this before. You can download uh, the Reaper plugins individually. They're called the Replugs. Uh, if you head on over to Reaper.com, they are available, and you can download. Uh, I don't know if every version of the plugin uh, that comes in Reaper is available as a separate package of VST. I think there's a whole lot that isn't. Uh, sure, you could download just the Reaper plugins, but if you're downloading the full version of Reaper and you're actually using the VST uh, in Reaper, I'm going to open a project here. Let me just show you uh, some of the default plugins that uh, are going to come in Reaper. Now, Reaper has full support for DirectX, DirectX I, uh, VST, and VSTi or instrument. That's what the I stands for there. Um, there's also a line of plugins that are uh, essentially community created, all right? Uh, the JS version of plugins. And there's a lot of great versions of plugins as well in there. Uh, DSers, uh, you know, different MIDI options, um, all sorts of, uh, you know, auto tune. There's EQs in there. There's some uh, distortions and flange. And, and the list just kind of goes on and on uh, in the way of the JS plugins. But looking at the default uh, plugins that come with Reaper that are made by uh, not, not just the community, but those that, that made the collaborative effort to create Reaper, uh, those guys there, uh, C-O-C-K-O-S, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that, but uh, if you look at the default plugins, it comes with a, uh, a compressor, full band, uh, some MIDI control, some delay, EQ, refer, which is a wonderful, um, it, there, there's several options that it can do for some compression and gate, but it also has some amazing noise reduction capability, uh, some of the best in the business in, in, in the way of a affordability for what you're getting as far as what it actually does. Uh, there's all sorts of other, there's some pitch plugins in there as well, surround sound, some other things you can do with that. Uh, maybe you think of uh, the ever popular auto-tune uh, that Cher made popular. Uh, there is a, a program in there as well that does the auto-tune. 
uh, and does a great job at it for a pitch correction. Okay, you can use that on a vocal track. Uh, does great. It's uh, again, it's default that comes with Reaper. Uh, another thing I love about Reaper is there is a impulse generated uh, nice reverb that comes in. And okay, I love it. Uh, impulse reverbs uh, are wave files that are basically modeled. They're recorded from the actual real world environment. And so, an impulse generation reverb tends to just be a little more realistic than something that is completely generated in a digital environment. Uh, that's default with the default plugins with Reaper as well. You also get a great multi-band compressor. Uh, I'm not really sure how many bands you're limited to. Let me see if I can add a bunch of them here. Uh, it may not have a limitation. I'm just clicking add band, add band, and right now I'm up to like 34 bands of multi-band compression. Uh, you'll never use that many. But hey, you have it if you want it. Uh, but it comes default with the program. That's separate from uh, the, the full band version of, uh, of just the, the recomp, okay, which is the regular compressor. Uh, the delay is great. The EQ is excellent. Got the built-in graph right in it uh, as well. Uh, and again, uh, you can add as many bands as you want, adjust the Q. It's some of the most powerful ones I've seen. Um, all the plugins that come in Reaper are very efficient. They sound great. Great. Um, the compressor supports uh, the main compressor supports sidechain input, which is uh, extremely helpful. I've done some demo stuff using that as well. And so uh, Reaper is a little weak on the virtual instruments that come with it. Uh, however, my personal uh, opinion, I often find that uh, my my virtual plugins, when it comes to instruments, I only need a few of those. Uh, I use uh, uh, Addictive Drums, the Addictive Keys plugins, uh, a couple other synth plugins. And you may find as well that, uh, you know, I've invested a little more money to getting something that was very realistic and they work great with Reaper. They just don't come for that $60, but you're only spending $60 on the software to get the vast majority of what you need. The core is all there. Uh, you've got a little more money if you really want to zero in on some nice, uh, uh, maybe a drum VSTi or a good synth VSTi, and then you're ready to roll. So uh, I love that. That's the third thing I love about Reaper is the default plugins that it comes with. Um, the fourth thing that I'll say about Reaper, uh, which can get a little confusing for some people, is uh, the the version of 64-bit versus 32-bit. Now, when we talk about 64-bit, there's really two things we're referring to, and sometimes people get them confused. One is uh, dealing with your operating system. Now, I'm using uh, Windows 7 right now. Uh, I have not made the jump to Windows 8 uh, for fear of uh, the, the efficiency that I'm going to lose. I uh, have not heard good things about Windows 8, but I'm using Windows 7. And uh, it is the 64-bit version of Windows 7. To give you some specs a little more about the machine I'm using, uh, that'll make sense here in a little bit. Uh, I've got 8 gigs of RAM here. This is my laptop. Uh, nothing fancy, okay? 15-inch monitor. It's an Asus laptop. Um, I'm sorry, it's a, uh, yeah, Asus laptop, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, 64-bit Windows 7 uh, edition, and it's the home premium edition, okay? So it's not even the pro edition. Uh, and it scores, in as far as the Windows experience, a 5.9, which is really not all that high. Uh, it does have the i7 processor in it, uh, which is a quad core in this particular version, and each of those cores are 2.7 gigs uh, for, for you geeks out there that uh, are following the specs of that machine. So that's the machine I'm dealing with. Uh, and so one vein of 64-bit is this little line right here. My operating system is 64-bit as opposed to 32. Uh, the bottom line with 64-bit versus 32 is 64-bit allows you to use more of the RAM that's available in your machine, and there are many processes that it does basically uh, double the speed. Not everything, uh, but there definitely are noticeable performance improvements. Uh, now, having said that, I know that uh, there's some of you out there that would look me square in the eye and call me a liar for saying that 64-bit makes a difference. Uh, and so uh, what I did in this last month while I was working on this project was I decided to just answer that question specifically for myself. Uh, and here's what I did. This project that you're uh, looking at here in Reaper, I'll, I'll play for you in a moment. But um I downloaded and installed both the 32-bit and the 64-bit version of Reaper. 
And then I took this project and I duplicated, made sure all the plugins that I was using uh, that I had downloaded or free versions or paid versions of my VSTIs, that I had both the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions of each of those plugins. And then I just did some real-world tests of the project. I played the project and did some editing in the 32-bit version. And then I, I closed it out and I redid the same thing in the 64-bit version with the exact same project. And when I ran it in 64-bit mode with full 64-bit plugins, I was able to get about a 15% decrease in the amount of CPU usage that was required for Reaper to process the project. And so there was definitely a performance increase there. Uh, the 64-bit version of it did slightly use a little bit more RAM. It did not increase above what I believe is a, is a 4 gig limit with 32. But nevertheless, uh, the CPU increase uh, was a uh, uh, use about 15% less at its peak uh, CPU, which means that's about 15%, 10 to 15% more performance just by having a DAW that supports my 64-bit operating system. That is one thing I love about Reaper. That's important. Every little air, uh, area, you know, area I can squeeze more performance, I'm all about it. Uh, now, uh, the other area when we deal with 64-bit uh, has to do with actual processing of what is going on when you put audio within Reaper and you pull that audio back out again, uh, was that audio processed at full 64-bit from end to end? And that is dealing with uh, this right down in here. There's a little question if I look at reaper.fm. Uh, where they answer that, should I go with the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version? And there's a little note in here that all the versions of Reaper have full resolution 64-bit internal audio signal path from end to end, and that is regardless of whether you're using a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system. What that means is the guts of what's going on inside Reaper, it is processing your audio and plugins at a full 64-bit as well, and that just simply means higher quality. So not only can you get the 64-bit version of Mac or PC in Reaper and utilize your 64-bit operating system, it is also processing your audio if you use 64-bit uh, plugins or the default ones that come with it, it's going to process your audio from end to end at a full 64-bit, which is higher quality. All for 60 bucks. That's an amazing deal. Um, okay, uh, let me give you reason number let's see, five, I believe here, of why I record with Reaper. And so this is probably one of my most favorite things about Reaper. Uh, I've heard it said a few times where I've suggested for people to inquire about Reaper, and I've gotten this response that, hey, Dave, uh, you know, I trust you, but I've opened Reaper, and man, it just seems confusing, and I'm not a computer nerd, and so it really turned me off to even trying to get over the learning curve. And I'll say two things about that. Number one, uh, you know, anytime you try something new uh, and you're used to something else and it's new, it can be confusing. That's that, that's going to happen no matter what DAW you try. Number two, I get it, okay? Um, you know, Pro Tools, still the industry standard to this day, has really kind of created the digital, the guys from Avid created what we know as kind of the virtual digital audio workstation. The world that we're normally working in that we're used to, we really kind of stemmed out of everything Pro Tools, okay? They kind of set the pace for what it looks like. And there's some things that are unique to Reaper, and it can be confusing a little bit if, you're, if you've not spent a little bit of time with it. And, and I totally get that. Here's where the ability to actually change what Reaper looks like, not features, but the interface or the theme to actually reskin it is an option and a feature that I love about Reaper. Uh, I've got just the default theme that you're looking at here in front of me. Again, this is the project that I've been working on brand new for the, the beginning part of this year. I'll play it for you in a minute. Uh, but here's the default theme of Reaper if you're watching the video version of this. Here's what I love. Um, I've downloaded a couple different options on themes. Maybe you want something that looks a little different uh, and just a little different to get uh, you know used to, a little clearer maybe, uh, highlight some things that you don't normally uh, here's a theme called Revolution that is one of my favorite themes about Reaper. Uh, love it. Uh, just has some clear things uh, that looks a little different. Here's the what the actual uh, mixer portion of this looks like. 
Uh, and so you can see the buttons are kind of cool looking, gives you access to your plugins up here and the panning, the width, all that. But changing just this theme changes all of the look and the feel. It reskins exactly what Reaper looks like. That is really cool because if you're confused at the default look, there's a good chance you can find something that is not as confusing. Uh, how about this theme right here? This is one that I use a lot, having been uh, you know, an avid uh, Pro Tools user for years. Uh, this is a theme that is modeled after, I believe, Pro Tools uh, 8 or 9, something like that. Uh, but check this out. Here we go. If you're looking at the video version, uh, this is a, an excellent theme that I use often. Uh, and, it, and it looks a lot like Pro Tools. It's not identical, but it's familiar. It's very familiar. Uh, again, let me let you look at the, uh, the mixer interface for this version very familiar it's clean looking uh you know and it's more maybe what some of you are used to and so if you're used to kind of what a DAW should be in Pro Tools is your uh, your comparison, get Reaper, spend 60 bucks. Most of these themes, the two that I showed you, are absolutely free. Uh, most of the themes are free. There are some paid versions uh, that are uh, even, uh, you know, have some other features as well. But if you don't like the way it looks, just change it. Uh, you know, how awesome is that? Uh, I'll put a link to this in the show notes as well. Uh, but uh, in the way of themes, and you're looking for more Reaper themes, you can head on over to stash.reaper.fm. That is S-T-A-S-H dot Reaper dot F-M. And uh, in there, you'll find a, a good uh, repository of, of just different themes that are available. There's lots of them uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you can just go through and find out exactly which one that fits you best. And uh, you'll be able to find a theme that probably, no doubt, is less confusing for you. And it is just something that looks sharper and uh, maybe more tailored to your taste. There's lots of different theme options as well. So that's another huge benefit that I love uh, from Reaper. Uh, okay, two more, two more reasons I want to give you to consider Reaper and the reasons, uh, some of the top reasons, uh, the seven top reasons that I record with it personally. Uh, and reason number six is uh, the routing capabilities of Reaper. Uh, now, I told you earlier that I've got a project here, uh, and if I uh, open this project and look at the mixer view, you're going to see that I've got a ton of tracks, uh, well over 50 uh, to be exact. Uh, I've got all sorts of uh, plugins and effects all over the place. Uh, I'm, I'm using multi-band compression. I'm using some ducking. Uh, I've got some aux send set up for my reverb. <clears throat> I've got, excuse me, I've got uh, some buses created uh, as well. Uh, I've got uh, some master buses created where I'm doing some parallel compression before it even goes to the master fader. I've got uh, some different uh, buses that I use, a couple tracks that I'm using just for my reference mixes. And within Reaper, I have got all sorts of routing options, pretty much anything that I would need to do by the way of routing, I can do. Uh, Reaper has got some amazing routing capabilities. And by routing, I mean, where is the signal coming into each track and where is it going out? Uh, I can, uh, there's just all the limit. It's the sky's the limit, honestly. Uh, you can control the post fader, uh, pre fader, pan to those, to all your sends. Uh, you can send and receive. It's not limited to just eight master buses or eight bus subgroups. You can create unlimited amounts. Uh, you can do all sorts of things uh, by way of routing. And without getting into all the things that's going on in this mix, I can tell you uh, by experience that I have yet to run into a brick wall when it comes to routing with Reaper. I have never gotten to the place where I really needed to route something a very complex certain way and Reaper would not allow me to do that. Reaper's routing capabilities are just absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, I feel like they should be paying me for using this, uh, you know, when I think about only 60 bucks. Okay, so great. Uh, you know, awesome options there. Now, the last thing that I want to point out and uh, the number seven reason that uh, I, I that really shines to the top for me of why I use Use Reaper, and also why you yourself may want to consider thinking about checking Reaper out is this: its performance. Okay, now without rehashing it, uh, you know I just told you the specs to my computer. I just told you everything that uh, you know my laptop does. I'm, I'm just using a laptop with a 15-inch monitor. Uh, it's an Asus. Uh, one of the things that I need to mention is I am not using 
an external hard drive, okay? Uh, there's a 750 uh, gig drive in this, but it is the, the internal drive that came with uh, my, you know, my, my laptop here. I did not add an external drive. If you can do that, great. Uh, if you can separate your operating system from an audio drive, uh, you know, you tend to get a little performance boost. That's awesome. But I don't, I don't have that option right now. I didn't have the money for that just yet. Uh, this project right now, I am using the M audio M track in interface. Uh, it's a USB 2.0. And so that's what I'm running with right now. And um, I want to do one thing here. I'm going to open up my performance meter. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you uh, several things. Number one, it's going to show you that in this project, I have got 58 live tracks of both uh, audio and some of those are MIDI. I'm, I'm using the Addictive Drums plugin. That's MIDI. And then I'm using uh, also a Scarby bass, which is a, a bass uh, plugin that is MIDI. And so um, the, the bass guitar and drums that you're going to hear in this track are, are not uh, audio. They're MIDI, okay? It's a VSTi. Uh, we'll deal with what those are. Uh, in a, they're my favorite ones, by the way, but we'll talk about those in a later episode. Uh, but I've got 58 tracks going on, okay? And um, with all the routing and everything that's happening in the tracks, I have got 65 total FX plugins uh, that are that are happening, okay? Uh, and so what the performance meter is showing me is how much of each of those tracks and each of those plugins are using of my CPU. And then I've also got this little uh, meter down here in the bottom left that is gonna show me that by percentage. And it's gonna show me uh, how much RAM is being used uh, for the project. Right now, uh, I'm not playing anything. Uh, it's just kind of stored in RAM. So I've got 17, roughly 14, 15% of the CPU being used. That includes the operating system and the programs that are running right now. And so, also, keep in mind with all those things, I'm doing a screen capture using Camtasia uh, as well. And so I'm going to play to you what is uh, the busiest part of this particular track. And then uh, we're going to just take a brief look as you listen and, and, and play and watch through this track. Listen to all the things that are going on. And then I want you to pay attention to the performance meter and specifically the CPU usage uh, again, don't forget, I'm doing this on a laptop, no external drive, a $99 audio interface, uh, you know, an i7 uh, processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 750 on the hard drive, but no external. And uh, the uh, the other thing that I'll point out before I play this is I'm, I'm running the audio at 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. And with this setup with the ASIO default ASIO drivers right from M-Audio, I'm getting a 7.4 um, round trip return on latency, uh, 7.4 milliseconds. That is basically the time that it takes my audio interface uh, to talk to the computer and back again. Anything under 10 seconds is, is pretty doable. I'm getting 7.4, which is uh, pretty great for this setup, okay? Um, Again, $99 audio interface. So let me let you hear a portion of this track. And then uh, if you're watching the video, pay attention to the bottom left-hand side uh, and also the performance meter. had that set the loop there a little a little tight. Uh, and so, okay, as I played all of that with all the things that are going on, and believe me, there's a lot that was happening in there uh, from my aug sense to the compression, to the effects of the parallel compression, the buses, all that, my CPU usage along with the screen capture did not go above 35%, stayed right around there at its peak. Several times it was much lower than that. No dropouts, audio is very clean. And again, this is a project that is in progress. So 
it's not mastered or anything like that, but you're listening to and watching literally the project uh, as I'm, I'm kind of getting toward the end of, of finishing this out, and then we'll, we'll talk about mastering. But the performance that I'm getting from Reaper is nonetheless impressive, uh, in my opinion, for a $99 interface and, and a lot of free uh, VSTs, as well as the $60 Reaper with the default ones that came with it uh, is very impressive. Um, and, and so the performance of Reaper is uh, is definitely uh, very something that can compete with with some of the best that are out there. And uh, that is the, the seventh reason why I record with Reaper. So that said, uh, hopefully this is giving you something to think about. And uh, if you're still kind of on the fence, you're you're not sure if you should use a different recording software, you might want to give Reaper a try. Head on over to reaper.fm, download uh, the version of Reaper, the only version that's available. Check it out. Give it a couple months, do a project on it, and you may find that it, it works great for you as well. It's definitely something to consider. In the future, I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials using Reaper uh, because I've been spending a lot of time on it. Again, nothing against any other DAW. I, I love Sonar. I love Pro Tools. I love there's a lot of different stuff out there. I know you guys use Logic. Uh, a lot of you are just using different things. Nothing against any of that, uh, but I'm just finding Reaper to be, in my opinion, the number one most affordable full-featured uh, DAW that is out there. When we talk about creating professional audio on any size budget, in my opinion, Reaper is the number one option if budget is your concern versus getting professional audio. And so hopefully this has been helpful to you. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to us in iTunes or in YouTube, you can do that now. Make sure to hit subscribe. And for you, those that are listening in iTunes, uh, I'd invite you to do a, a search in iTunes in the iTunes store for Home Music Studio one and give me an honest review once you find our feed there love to hear back from you and then lastly if you haven't yet joined literally the hundreds per month of of community members that are are interacting and part of the uh the newsletter and part of uh just the community of downloads and interacting with the forums and all that or the exclusive facebook group as well if you're not part of that somewhere i want to invite you to do that head on over to freerecordingtools.com you can throw your email into uh, the list there and hit send. And you know what? That'll get you on the free newsletter and that'll get exclusive information from me directly to you, directly to your inbox. That'll keep you up to date with all the things that are going on, give you some tools to continue producing professional audio to learn how to do that regardless of your budget size. And just as a thank you from me to you for signing up uh, for the newsletter, I'm also going to send you a free ebook uh, if you just put your email in. Uh, in that list there and click send. I'll get that out to you right away. That is called Understanding Compression in the Home Music Studio. That's a question I get a lot. And so I put an ebook together to answer that question to kind of explain that. I think that'll be really helpful to you. Again, head on over to freerecordingtools.com and uh, join us uh, in the, the exclusive uh, newsletter. I'd love to hear it from you as well. With that, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give us your honest uh, feedback and review. Until next time, this is David Maxey with Home Music Studio One.